Fantasy EFL Game Week 11 has finished. The double game week has finished. I unfortunately could not get 100 points this week. Couldn't break the 100 point mark. I mean, the reason being, I didn't pick Alfie Doughty over George Savile. But it was a marginal, yeah, Alfie Doughty over George Savile. I had Alfie Doughty, then I took him out. Mickey Dimitri was didn't play the second game of the double game week. He was injured. Yeah. And he was my captain. So that was a double blow. It was a double whammy. And a, and a, and a triple whammy. Was, was Crew actually won. With a Ryan Cooney penalty. And the fact that he scored in both the games. Of Crew's double game week as well. Like oh my god days like sometime sometimes going for the obvious pick i get it i get it we want to protect our rank especially at the top but if you're chasing then you can actually find the differentials there and that's what makes it fun because you never know what differentials could turn up because sometime these differential picks are now going to be heard of by the wider efl fantasy fantasy crew and we're all gonna we're all gonna jump on him like, knee-jerking in this game, it's real out here. It's it's always been real. And this is something that I want to say. Christy PM get, got me eight points in the double game week. Mansfield lost to Stevenage. He got four points, five saves from that game and the loss. And then Mansfield won 2-1 against Wigan Athletic away from home. He made three saves there. Christy Piam was an ultra differential, got me eight points. There were better goalkeepers out there, but hey, it is what it is. Anthony O'Connor, though. Anthony O'Connor. Amazing, amazing, amazing player. Got four points in Harrogate's one. One draw away at Carlisle and in Port Vale's in the Port Vale's 1-0 victory over Harrogate. He made a mammoth 16 clearances. He made eight clearances against Carlisle, 16 clearances against Port Vale, who had one of the best away forms in the competition. One block, one block. Two blocks as well, getting the extra bonus point. Anthony O'Connor, still an ultra differential, has not County away. And we're actually going to talk about the, the mini double game week as well. Miki, Dimitri, I told you guys about him. Four points in Cruz, one all draw with Salford, made eight clearances, then was injured for the second game. Unfortunate, it is what it is. Luke Monulu. Got 10 points in Doncaster's 2-1 away win against Swindon. Assisted, made two interceptions and got three key passes. And against Bromley, he made two key passes, but Doncaster lost 1-0 at home. Luke Monilu is still a popular player, but Doncaster have Bradford City away. Not a double game week for them, so we have to act accordingly. George Seville. George Seville. Probably was the biggest disappointment of the week. He only got three points. Three key passes in Millwall's one all draw with Derby County. And then in Millwall's one nil victory over Plymouth, he made four key passes but got a yellow card, meaning that he got three points. George Saville has lost ownership from that disappointing game week. So has uh, Dimitriou as well. So those are two players we are looking to move on. For this coming game week. I think we could probably get away. With not having Mik Miki Dimitriou. Dimitriou. As I talk about the fixtures. For the. For the upcoming game week. The biggest. Biggest. Riser. Well. That actually maintained my rank. Was Nathan Lowe. Of Walsall. He netted me 16 points. 
it's still a differential in the fantasy EFL community, but he is rising fast. 11 shots on target, 6 goals and 4 assists, 9 key passes. He's a monster being paired up with Jamil Matt. And with, well, well, 8 points. He scored here against Grimsby and he made 2 key passes in Warsaw's 4-1 away victory in Cleethorpes. And then at home, he played 79 minutes, scored a goal and had 2 shots on target in Warsaw's 3-1 victory. Over Carlisle United. What what a signing. What a play that was from me. Borges signs as well. I thought that Norwich were going to struggle. And technically Norwich kind of struggled in the two um, away fixtures. Fixtures. Did it return against Stoke in the one all draw. Returned the goal. And two shots on target in a two all comeback draw against Preston. Bear in mind, Preston were 2-0 up earlier in the match. Borges Science has dropped ownership. Well, Norwich have a game against Middlesbrough. A tough looking game, that. But Mansfield Town, they did get me. My club picks were Mansfield Town, who got nine points for the week. A win, away win, and they, and they scored two goals in the game against Wigan. Didn't get points against Stevenage. Warsaw got me 16 points. Nine points, win, away win, and two goals. Goals and and win and two goals at home against Carlisle United. So Walsall done me good. For this week, this is I would probably say this is my um draft right now. When it loads. When it loads, my Wi-Fi is just having trouble. Connecting right now. Wi Fi having trouble connecting. So here we go. We got. Here we go. I know there's a few double game week players in here and there's a few single players as well. We got to talk about the single play players in the game week, especially from the championship. I mean, there's three outstanding fixtures this week in the championship. The first one being Burnley versus QPR. I mean, Burnley's home form has been impressive. They haven't lost at home so far in the league. They are a select few teams. Well, a fair amount of teams have not lost at home so far in, in the league. And Burnley looking for the instant return. Looking to climb on top. Looking to jump ahead of Sunderland. Well, actually, no. Looking to put the pressure on Sunderland, actually. Actually, by beating QPR. I think that could happen as well. The players to target from the championship would probably be James Trafford in terms of the goalkeeper. He got 11 points in the double game week as well. Clean one, clean sheet against Sheffield Wednesday going a long way. Alongside with that, Josh Brownhill, a popular fantasy FL player, got 13 points. Points. He even scored against Sheffield Wednesday to increase his appeal as a single player asset that could maybe outscore the double game week assets. Don't don't focus on having all double game week. There are players that can easily outscore outscore score the double game week players. It's basically gambling. If I could gamble, I could probably gamble on Burnley. Burnley. Some Burnley players outscoring some double game week players. I'm not going to mention who though. That can be something. For Sunderland, I would probably only go with one player from Sunderland. That, might, that being Dennis Cherkin. He's actually rose in ownership. And he's a solid He's a solid player. If, if, there, if I was to get a... If I was to get a single player, it would definitely be Dennis Cherkin, 100%. 100%. Oxford United have not won away from home yet this season. Sunderland have an imperious home, imperious home form, only dropping points at home to Leeds. Leeds whilst beating everybody else and only conceded two goals. Goals, the same amount of goals as Burnley. As well, but Oxford 
have the capabilities to score. But Dennis Cherkin, when he hauls, he can haul good. He can haul really good. 11 points in Sunderland's 1-0 away victory against Hull. Hull being precisely that. The other fixture can... The other fixture is actually... Whenever you think about it, let me just get this up right now. Championship. Let me get it up. Let me get it up. Let me get it up. Because we are looking at Sheffield United as a potential to outscore. Sheffield United can outscore. They can outscore. Salt score. Sheffield United. Sheffield United can outscore. Outscore. Harry Sawata is a good defender to really go with. I would go with a Sheffield United defensive asset. Really. I think um what was Harmer? Harmer's injury. That's Gustavo Harmer's injury. Because I believe he was injured as well. He was injured. I would go with Sheffield United defence. Stoke have only scored one away goal. All season, I would definitely go with a Sheffield United defender. Defender for that. But now for the double game week. Now for the double game week. Now for the double game week. The mini double game week, actually. We're going to look at the fixtures. So let's have a look at the fixtures. Let's see what it's saying. So Lincoln are playing twice in the midweek. Lincoln doubling in the midweek. Northampton double in the midweek. Northampton are doubling. Stockport are doubling. Reading are doubling. Bolton and Stevenage are doubling as well, but on sofa score, they don't have the Bolton Stevenage game game as well. They don't have that Bolton Stevenage game. Weird, but let, let, let's just have a look. Let's just have a look. Look here. Let's just have a look and see what plays. We'll see what um. I think we can have a look. So let's just go. On the doubles, only the doubling teams. Can we can we can we do that? Can we can we can we do that? Can we do that? Oh no, who's double? Who else is doubling? Who else is doubling? Who's doubling? I forgot. I forgot who's doubling. I forgot who's doubling. Fleetwood's doubling. They they got Salford. Let's just put Salford in there. Lincoln I've already done you. Northampton. Stevenage, Stockport, Reading. I think that's all the doublers. I think that's all the doublers. Yep, that's all the doublers. So we got the doubling. Teams that are doubling. Teams that are doubling. And with their, with their assets right now, considering their assets are actually kind of fun, I would go for defence. I would go for Lincoln City. Yep, they've got a point to prove they've lost both games in their double game week. 3-1 home defeat to Birmingham. Understandable considering Birmingham are expected to win the league. But also they had a 3-0 defeat to Crawley Town. No one would have anticipated this. Not even me, but I think that's Crawley's first win under their new boss, Rob Elliott. That's their first victory. Victory, so they had our points to prove after losing 4 1 to Reading away from home. So that is something, that's something as well. So I've gone with Pordy O'Connor for the defense as well. I'll probably go with a Fleetwood defender, maybe because I think Fleetwood's double is actually better than Salford's double, marginally better than Salford's double, considering you know they're playing Salford at home. And then Salford have an early kickoff away at Colchester. So there is that. Stevenage defender is also very good. I mean, Walden is also very good, but you have to watch out to see if he actually does play or not. Pirigiani is suspended, so maybe his minutes will actually be better in this double. Pirigiani suspended four or five yellow cards, I think. So maybe his ownership could rise, but if he actually played the double, I think his ownership would have really risen. By now, Rotherham United is actually. I mean, there's clean sheet potential there. I mean, even I said Mansfield away was actually kind of tough for Stevenage. Maybe Rotherham away could be tough, but then again, Rotherham. Rotherham could win it, but then again, Rotherham misfire a lot. 
again, and then Bolton, can you even trust Bolton to turn up? Like, that, that's the way I'm seeing things right now. Can you trust Bolton to turn up? Because even then, Bolton, I don't, I don't fancy Bolton for their double game week. I don't fancy, so I'd rather give Bolton a miss for their double game week. Not like they impressed in the in the big game week anyway, Bolton, but yeah, I, I, it's, it's just one of them. It's just one of them. Maybe Northampton. Maybe if you're feeling brave, you could go Northampton versus Crawley. You could go potentially Northampton Crawley because I don't think I don't think they get anything out of Lincoln. But even then, I would probably avoid Northampton. Really and truly, I'd probably avoid Northampton. Bolton. I mean, the odds favour Bolton. But, uh, but then again, the odds favour Bolton. But Bolton have been indifferent away from home. But so have been Peterborough. So it's like a bit of case of which team wins better on the day. Lincoln, I probably I probably would back Lincoln. They've got a point to prove. Yes, Stockport is actually a tough nut. Stockport's a tough nut to crack. They haven't lost away so far. So Stockport are a tough nut to crack. Really. Really so. That's that's the belief I have right there. Rotherham versus Stevenage. I would probably back Rotherham for that game. Game Lincoln Northampton could go either way. Stockport Reading. That's their first time they're ever playing each other in just recent years and all that all that stuff. Colchester Salford. Is that Tilly? Maybe I could back the Salford keeper. Maybe I could back the Salford keeper. Considering all these goalkeepers. Not really good, but even Fleetwood goalkeeper as well. Not to mention that part of my soul. Well, Erehan, Erehan, Charlie Savage. But even even then, you got all the players here. You got all the players here, so you can get goalkeeper, goalkeeper. Murphy Mahoney, Murphy Mahoney. I mean, you've got Murphy Mahoney, who's a good player. Joel Pereira, maybe, but we'd rather go outfielders for Reading. Adai, Jody Jones, Jody Jones, Jody Jones, Lee Burge, Harrington. Not really good options for the goalkeeper for this double game week. I don't really fancy them. I could even go with Sheffield United, Mike Cooper. Because he's technically a good one. Defensively, you've got the options there. Paul De O'Connor, Stevenish defender. If you're feeling braver, Stockport defender as well. Ethan Pai, Fraser Horseville, Horseville, Carl Johnson of Fleetwood. I've got him in. Bolton defence. I am Bolton defence. Bolton defence, I don't really, you know what I mean? I can't really trust Bolton right now, you know the ones. Bolton Wanderers, midfielders, Lewis Wing has to be in for this double game week. He's nailed. If you don't have Lewis Wing, I don't know what you're doing, mate. Because Reading, Bristol Rovers at home, they could smoke them again. It could be another smoke session, especially in that early kickoff as well. Cole Dempsey's still up there, but again, it's minutes. It's the minutes for me. Sapong Widaru. It could be good. It could be good, but he only got one point in in fleet with 3-1 defeat to Port Vale. So it's like it's one of them ones. It's one of them ones. Uh -huh. uh -huh. As well. He's a he could be a, I mean he could be a very good player. He could be a good player. If you want to double up on Lincoln, I would probably go him. Lincoln City Defender for sure. Charlie Savage. If you want to go in with Reading, with double Reading, Wing and Savage could be the play. If you want to back Bolton, I probably would go around the Williams. Maybe Josh Sheehan. The Northampton McGeehan is their goal scorer. For sure. Um, let's just see. And then others probably wouldn't target them. And then for the Strikers. Actually, wait. Yes, for the striker position, I mean, there's only really an option that, a, a cap, huge captain option, huge captain option, one being Louis Barry, 
One being Louis Barry scored twice in the double game week. It's the whole double game week. But don't sleep on Carl Wooten. He is, well, actually, maybe, maybe he could be, Carl Wooten could be a differential, but the amount of times he's blanked maybe is putting people off. Off him. Louis Barry maybe is more consistent. Maybe. Ronan Coughlan is actually underperforming in terms of his XG 15 shots on target and four goals with 11 key passes. So maybe Ronan Coughlan could maybe convert into goals. Convert it into goals. Dion Charles, good player on his day, can be explosive, but again, minutes is stopping me from getting him. And that is it. And that is it, and that is it, and that is it. So subscribe, like the vid, and this is my first draft on the Club Picks of Lincoln and Reading. And that is it, that is it really. Reading, non-negotiable, Lincoln City, I think they will bounce back.